Do you know that anxiety that you feel when you need to upgrade the package? Is it safe? Will it break anything? Is it as simple as it looks like? Or there's any hidden surprise waiting for production to reveal itself? So in this video I will show you a simple and low effort technique that will help you to feel more confident when you need to upgrade those packages. But first let me tell you the story of my most recent upgrade that went wrong. It all started when I needed to build a simple CRUD API on top of a Postgres database. What looks like a straightforward implementation. The only aspect worth mentioning is that the cat endpoint should have a list of values that could filter a given column. So since I was using NPG SQL, I went online, searched for a solution, and I quickly found a simple one. It looked like that I could provide the list of arguments, so a list of strings, as a parameter to my query. I quickly implemented it and released it. Little did I know that eventually this would lead me to some challenges. So recently I had to upgrade that API to .NET 8. And as part of that upgrade, we decided to upgrade the NPG SQL package to the latest version. What is something that I've done many times and I never had a single problem until this day. So we upgrade everything, we run the tests, there were some tests in place, we release it until we got the first errors. And where those errors were coming from? From that particular implementation that we have done to search using a list of parameters to filter a given column. So now we need to dig into it to understand where the problem is coming from. Is it something regarding upgrading to .NET 8? Is it something regarding upgrading that package? In this case, it was a breaking change that the compiler didn't caught it. And this was only happening to one of our corner case features. And unfortunately, we didn't have tests covering that. Okay, I know that we should have spot this thing through automation testing. We didn't have that test in place. But even with those tests in place, we will need to check the logs. We will maybe need to run the debugger. And only then we could fix this thing. And in some cases, the fix might be something as rolling back the package, assuming that we can support that feature with a new version. So could I have done something different instead? Could I have done something to prevent it? So let's go back in time. What if, when we have to implement that list filter, instead of going right away to the implementation or building a simple demo application that then we'll throw away, what if instead we created a test project? To this technique, we call learning tests. And how do we do them? First thing is create a simple test project. Then go ahead and create a test. The goal of that test is to drive your exploration, your learning path. You are learning how an SDK, our library, how an API works. So we can do it through tests. Do you want to check how using this SDK you can write to a database? So name your test writing to the database. You want to check how with NPG SQL you can provide a list of parameters to filter a given query, give it that name. And once you have a set of tests that are green and are a good explanation on how to use that API, how to perform the things that you'll need to do with that API, with that SDK, with that library, you can simply commit it. And notice that now you not only know how to perform those things, you also have an executable documentation. Anyone else in your team can go back into that project and check how can I insert something into this database using this SDK? How can I achieve my task? I have everything there. I can even debug it and understand the flow that it goes. I have every single thing there. And notice that usually you already do that with a simple console application that you create and eventually you throw away. You might be part of the team that doesn't do this thing of creating a simple project to test a new SDK, to be familiar with it. You might be part of the team that does it right away in the final implementation. Notice that then you are mixing the learning and the implementation. It's like a football player practicing in the Sunday game. It doesn't mean that during the game you will learn a few things, but learning should be separated from the implementation itself. Why? Because that way you can have quick cycles even learning. So you can see this learning tests idea as a kind of a playground to explore a given package. 
Now you may argue that this is an extra cost that you have in development cycle. And I can see the objections that this looks like an extra thing to do in your day to day. I don't see it that way. You are already doing this learning of adopting new things in your day job. You are doing through demo apps, you are doing it in the implementation, whatever. It's something that is already happening. You just need to redirect that effort into a new testing project. And now you gain the benefit that you have that executable documentation in place. So with the same effort that you do nowadays, you can take advantage of it for a long time. But the real magic of this thing is not the documentation. It's the fact that these learning tests could prevent that problem that I told you before. With learning tests, I can measure exactly the impact of a given upgrade. I know exactly the place that will fail once I upgrade the package. I know the radius of impact of that third-party breaking change. So if I have those learning tests in place, it will be quite simple. I will just go into that test project. I will run all my tests after upgrading the package. And I will quickly know if, for example, I have some breaking change that demands me to update the source code, if there's any feature that stopped working, if there's something deprecated, and I would learn that in just a few minutes. And that also gives me the confidence that when I assume that I will start an upgrade, I know that it will be simple or not. So in just a few minutes, doing something that I've always done, that is learning how the package works, I gained a lot of confidence. And confidence in software is invaluable but nothing of what I told you will matter if you don't have good tests. And that's why you should watch this video right here, where I show you how to get into test-driven development, and I will take you on a step-by-step -step journey to learning it.